Hi, thank you. Thank you. Uh, as indicated, my name is Judge Stanley L. Hill Sr. I am a judge currently serving on the Circuit Court of Cook County. I was appointed judge by the Illinois Supreme Court to the vacancy of Claudia Grace Conlon in 2010. I've been serving with distinction and with honor and enjoying my job ever since. I love justice. I love my job. I love my community. I love the people of the state of Illinois. I'm a very positive person. And quite coincidentally, I ended up with a punch number that reflects my philosophy. My punch number is 143. And for those of you who text, you will know that 143 means I love you. The reason for that is that I has got one letter, love has got four, you has got three. I didn't know that originally until the young people told me that you've got a great number because it really reflects your spirit. One, four, three, please vote for me. And when you go into the poll, just remember he's the judge that said, I love you. And, you know, people find that somewhat interesting because they sometimes have a difficult time dealing with a judge who says that. Well, I'm of the opinion if our society was a lot more civil and if we showed a lot more love and respect, we'd, a lot of the problems, a lot of the problems that we have in our society would just disappear. I believe that when you are civil, you're re you will receive civility. I believe that when you show respect, you have a right and most likely will get it in return. I think we need to soften the discourse. Nothing comes from nothing. I believe that what we have, we must make. What we cherish, we must achieve. What we wish to keep, we must defend. Don't just accept the status quo. It's appropriate for us to get busy, to do what needs to be done, because change is not the result of spontaneous combustion. It just doesn't happen. You've got to get busy, and you've got to be about doing what you do. And you've got to do it with the spirit of love and respect for your community and your fellow man. Let me tell you a little bit about my background. I grew up on 39th Street in Chicago, the south side of Chicago. I attended Wendell Phillips High School back in the 60s. I guess I'm a product of Johnson's Great Society. In the 60s, there was a push to pull African-American children out of neighborhoods and make sure that they got educations. I was such a young person. I was, uh, came from uh, Wendell Phillips High School, where I graduated, by the way, I might indicate, at 16. I went to high school at 12. Uh, I was class president, went on to Northwestern University, where I received uh, with, a, with a, uh, a full scholarship to study journalism at Medill School of Journalism. After that, I went on to the University of Michigan Law School, where I, was, uh, where I was, uh, received my JD degree. While in law school, while in law school, I taught at the University of Michigan to undergraduates. I taught issues in African American development and African American cultural history. After leaving law school, my first job was as an assistant state's attorney in the Cook County State's Attorney's Office. And even before I took the bar exam, I became a lecturer at DePaul University College of Law. I ultimately became an adjunct professor at that school, and I continued teaching there from 74 to 85. In fact, several, several circuit court judges who are currently serving or who have retired were my students. In fact, there's one justice on the Illinois Supreme Court right now who's one of my former students, taught him criminal procedure. Now, why do I say that? Even though I'm the love judge, you might say, I'm also well qualified to do the job that I do. Not only did I teach at DePaul, I taught at the University of Chicago Law School for two and a half years as a clinical fellow. Back then, they called them clinical fellows. Now they call them clinical professors. So I've been on the, the, the faculties at the University of Michigan, undergrads, uh, 
the University of Chicago Law School, as well as uh, DePaul University College of Law. In addition to that, I have been a voice for justice in this community for nearly four decades. I was a trial lawyer, but not only in Illinois, in Illinois, in state and federal court, as well as in the courtrooms throughout this nation. I've tried cases not only in Illinois, but in Arizona, in California, in Texas, in Mississippi, in North Carolina, Michigan, Ohio, uh, Indiana. Uh, I've been all over this country doing the kind of work I do. Um, you could call me a pretty good litigator. In fact, I was recognized last year on May the 18th uh, in an article, by the way, that I have here that I'll leave for your distribution and review. I was recognized by the United States District Court for the Northern District of Illinois uh, for my service in the Federal District Court as a federal defender. I received the prestigious award that's referred to as the United States District Court Award for Public Service. That represents the the consensus of the U.S. District Court judges as well as the federal bar. The reason I got it was because I served as a federal defender bar attorney for 33 years providing services to indigent individuals. But in addition to that, I was the lawyer for the village of Maywood for 15 years. I was its village prosecutor, corporation counsel from 82 through 97. General counsel, Bellwood School District 88 from 97 to 2004. Represented Calumet City, Dixmoor, Harvey, Markham, the Harvey Park District, uh, represented North Chicago, represented the Water Reclamation District for Greater Chicago, represented the Chicago Transit Authority, the Chicago Housing Authority, the Chicago Park District. And I'm not talking about sitting on a board, I'm talking about actually being in court, doing the work, knowing how to do the work, and not just saying that. Uh, you know, it's difficult for me to actually, even though I'm talking about it, I was told that when you're running for office, if you don't toot your horn, it won't get tooted. I'm the kind of person that doesn't really feel comfortable talking about what I can do. I was a trial lawyer, and it wasn't about what you said you could do, it was about what you did. So I would usually be the kind of guy that would go in and just do what needed to be done. I have a difficult time. This whole campaigning thing, I might indicate, makes me uncomfortable because I don't feel comfortable talking about myself. I prefer others to talk about me. But, so, the case might be, uh, I'm, I'm required to do that, so I'm gonna do it. Uh, but not only have I been involved in the law for 30, now 38 years, sworn in in 74, I'm also involved in the community. I'm the past president of ADAS McKinley Community Services. I was the president of that agency from 2004 to 2009. I first started in the agency in 1996. I um, uh, was on the Partnership for Quality Child Care. I was a board member of that. I'm on honorary trustee of Ancona School. Uh, I believe that life is not a dress rehearsal. This is the real thing. You've got to live it, you've got to love it, and you've got to give back to the community that's given you the benefits that you've received, which is why I'm so active. But not only am I active in the law, I'm also active in my hobbies. I have hobbies. I'm a certified scuba diver. I've been a certified scuba diver since 1978. I'm also a sailor. I have a sailboat, I might indicate, and I'm not part of the 1%, I might indicate. And I race in the Mackinac race, the race the Mackinac, because I believe in living life to its fullest and encouraging other people to do that. Because as indicated, life is not a dress rehearsal. This is the real thing. You gotta enjoy it, and you gotta love it, and you gotta do it with energy and zest. And that's the way I've always done it, and that's the way I will continue to do it, and that's the way I encourage folks who come into my courtroom to do it. Young people come into my courtroom with poor self-images. By the way, I serve in Maywood right now. I'm one of the few judges that 
signed to hear both criminal and civil cases because I've had extensive experience in both areas. Out of all of the judges, out of all of them running, be it in the circuit court, the appellate court, or the Supreme Court, I've got more trial experience than any of them, any of them. The book will show you that to be the case. But not only do I have trial experience, I've got appellate experience. I probably tried close to 200 jury trials alone, not to mention the best bench trials that I've tried over the years. When you go into court, you want a judge who is experienced. The circuit court, by the way, should be, in my opinion, where your most experienced judges are. And the reason for that is because you need to get it right the first time. Folks talk about appeals. They talk about appellate courts and Supreme Courts being the safety net where reverses and mistakes are made. But ask yourself, how would you feel if you were the individual who sat in jail 25 years waiting to get a case reversed that should have been done right the first time? Time and time again, we're hearing about mistakes that were made by trial judges and circuit courts that could have corrected problems and didn't. And as a result, innocent people stayed in jail. Justice delayed is justice denied. And it don't make me feel good that we've got a Supreme Court or appellate court that will ultimately get to correct the problems. They need to be corrected up front. Thus, you need judges who know what they're doing up front. This ain't no on-the-job training experience. You need your most experienced, in my opinion, most experienced judges at this level in the circuit court who are capable of handling the issues and have been around long enough to deal with the litigants who come before them. A lot of times, young judges get caught up in being intimidated by, you know, lawyers that have come in who talk a lot of talk. I'll put it that way. Well, there's very few folks who are going to intimidate someone like me who's been around doing it since 1974. Not just talking the talk, but doing it. Now, I know I got 10 minutes. I may have gotten that far. I, uh, I need to be bringing this to an end. But one thing I would like to leave you with, you can come up here and make your mouth say anything. And in fact, when you're in front of a camera trying to impress, everybody's going to be talking about what they can do. I submit, look at what they've done. Look at what they've done. Look at what other people have said that they have done. I can't, you can make yourself say anything. The question is, where do you spend your time? When I'm not in court, I spend my time dealing with people with disabilities at Ada S. McKinley. When I'm not in court, I spend my time on Lake Michigan working with issues related to Chicago's greatest natural resource, Lake Michigan. That's what I do with respect to my sailing and my scuba diving activities. They ask me, what are we going to do about the zebra mussels? What are we going to do about the Asian carp? Do we need to close the waterways? Are those, those are issues that I deal with, in addition to being the judge. Also, I've been married for 38 years. I've raised two sons, both grown in Chicago, by the way. We didn't move to the suburbs to raise them. We raised them in the city. Thank God they grew and we had no trouble out of them, you know, because I believe that if you train a child the way they should go when they're young, they won't depart from it. Not only that, I teach Sunday school every Sunday, even during the campaign. I teach at Morning Star Baptist Church, which is the church where I was raised and born, uh, back on 39th Street, my old neighborhood. I go back there because I believe that that's where I came from and that's where I need to be teaching young people so that they can see that if I did it, coming from such lowly beginnings, they can do it. Uh, I thank you for your time, and uh, I would very much appreciate you supporting me because I love being a judge, and uh, I love my job. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.